my body was diagnosed with primary progressive multiple sclerosis, which is a rare and severe form. And it's really different. I don't know why they call it multiple sclerosis, but it has nothing to do with autoimmune diseases and it's not inflammatory related. It's uh, basically just the nervous system degenerating for unknown reasons and it's like a steady decrease i was very young to be diagnosed with this uh, the doctors were kind of freaking out about it uh, i also freaked out about it <laughs> because i used to be an athlete then a surfer was super active I have a four-year-old daughter, like I've always been, you know, super high energy and, you know, high functioning, whatever you want to call it. And then all of a sudden, um, when things got really bad, that's when I finally um, decided to go consult a doctor uh, because I had to see that <laughs> this wasn't normal. Um, I almost couldn't walk anymore. I had a lot of symptoms and it took me so long to uh, go to the doctors because when I was just about my daughter's age, I lost my dad to brain cancer. And right now, currently, my mom, uh, her body is battling with ALS. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> it's not the best genetic background. So I was really scared and I was just scared to die and leave my daughter but anyway at some point i decided to go ahead because uh, i could not function anymore in my daily life so um things got bad as soon as i went to the doctors it kind of made everything official and then the um, like the doctors couldn't do anything and were kind of worrying me more uh, some of them even used language like you have to get your affairs in order um, and the thing to know about that type of a mess is that currently in the western medical world there are no treatments and so yeah for a couple of months i really went deep into you know like a pity party, a lot of anger. I guess you could call it depression. Um, my life was turned upside down and all of a sudden I needed a caretaker. I couldn't do anything by myself, basically. We had to move because the house we were in had um, lots of stairs. And for a month I was stuck in our bedroom, which was the level floor. And I was just stuck there all day long. And then it's like when, when my partner would uh, forget about me because he was living upstairs mostly. Uh, you know, sometimes I was left without water, without food for a couple of hours and it just made me feel so vulnerable and so dependent upon others for my own well-being. I hated it. I really hated it, but so many lessons. Anyway, and that's when I started uh, doing Dr. Joe's work, which was about three months ago, not that long ago. When I started, um, the shift was mostly internal. My life was exactly the same my symptoms were exactly the same, you know, everything was the same, except I started to truly, absolutely love my life. I went from being angry, really angry and feeling, you know, like a victim and miserable and, you know, like I'm only 33 and I have a young daughter and like I'm stuck at home and I depend on everyone and blah, 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 blah. And when I started doing the work, internally it shifted everything because that disease didn't matter anymore. <laughs> I really started seeing all my blessings. 
and started to live in the present moment and really truly appreciate everything I had because I had so much. I have so much, you know? And so even though on a, let's say, Western point of view, like I didn't do much <laughs> out of my days. I mostly stayed home because outside I had to use a wheelchair and where I live in Costa Rica, um, nothing is really adapted for wheelchairs. So I mostly stayed home because here I felt safe enough to kind of wobble around the house. And then outside, I live in the jungle, so I would just sit outside a couple of hours every day and appreciate the beauty of nature. I started gardening, that was super, super healing. And really being in the present moment, in the moment, uh, throughout my day, through everything I did. My mother and I decided to register for the Cancun event in February uh, 2022. So we met in Cancun for the retreat and the first couple of days I was still in that state, you know, of being so grateful for being here, for living, for still being able to enjoy so much out of life. But I can observe now that during the meditations, I would try to call in my healing. And Dr. Joe explains often that when you're trying to call in something, you're in this energy of lack. And so it doesn't really work. And after a couple of days, something shifted and it's like, I really didn't care <laughs> about my healing anymore. You know, I was just in my wheelchair, rolling around and talking to everyone and having such a great time and just enjoying every, every moment of it. And I felt so radiant, so blissful. So it made me realize like, wow, I can be like this, even though I have this, this ease. So, you know, life is good. And then, I think it was day four or five of the retreat, we had those walking meditations to do. And one morning, uh, you know, I would do them because I was still able to walk a little bit, but I needed my cane and someone holding me and helping me. And I was walking like very slowly and very unstable. And then that morning, all of a sudden, I felt my future self. I felt my future self and she was on the other side of me and holding me and being the sweetest and just encouraging me. And I kind of felt her, you know, when there's static in an image, that's what I was feeling like. It's like I could feel her coming in, but then right away going back out and then feeling her presence next to me. And that morning, the first thing she told me was, you're done with the wheelchair. It's not part of you anymore. You don't need it. It's time to let go. And it's just, it was like, yeah, okay, that's done. And so after the retreat, my helpers come with the wheelchair, you know, to put me, help me back in and get me off the beach. And I was just like, no, I don't need it anymore. And then I walked towards the beach, enjoyed the waves and the sun, and then just went back into my bedroom with Carrie and John, I think his name is, and they helped me. They pushed my chair so I didn't have anything to do with it. And we just parked it in my room and that was that. I never used it again. And you have to understand, you know, the retreat is in this big resort and everything is kind of far and that's a lot of walking. But from that point on, it didn't matter anymore. It really wasn't a problem. So that whole day I was walking with my cane still, 
you know, sometimes I would just hold it and have it in case I need it. Sometimes I would use it. But I was walking all day, you know? Just that in itself was an absolute miracle. And the same day at night, we had a second walking meditation. And so Carrie was still there to help me. And oh, we were just finishing the standing part and about to go in the walking part. And then, and you know, I heard Dr. Joe explain it multiple times, how at some point we just call something from the field and like bring it into ourselves. And there's no other way to describe it. And I wasn't trying to do that. I think that's important. It just happened because I was so in bliss and embodying that healing without needing it or without wanting it. And then I just felt my future self you know, enter my body. It's like, pfft, there she was, there I was, you know? And then Carrie took my cane and was about to, you know, help me. And it's like, I just pushed everything aside and started walking so strongly and so fast, so powerfully. It was amazing and then from that point on that future self was myself She's ready. She's ready. so after that i folded my cane put it back in my suitcase never used it again and i'm walking i'm walking strongly i'm walking every day I mean, that's a true miracle. And you know, during Cancun, I wasn't selected, randomly selected as a Healy. And I was so disappointed. The night we were told that, I had a little pity party for myself. Like I just shut myself in my room and felt really sorry for myself. But you know, the voice inside was just telling me, it's because you don't need it, you know? Don't feel sorry for yourself. It's because you don't need it. And all of that that I just shared happened the next day. Yeah. <sighs> and so now I'm back home. <laughs> and it's challenging I'm not gonna lie it's challenging because I feel like my old self is kind of creeping around every corner and I don't feel aligned with everything that's back home but I know the power inside of me and I know how that meditation practice is so powerful. And so I've been doing it every day, twice a day so far. I'm going out for a walk <laughs> and I find a therapist, physical therapist, who um, is gonna help me rebuild all the muscles and uh, neurological tissue pathways you know and this is where it gets really interesting because the future self I called in either she's not the one you know that's fully healed or it's simply you know she is I am but my body needs to catch up you know um, and so I'm in this space of 
really staying in the moment and appreciating every single little victory and not focusing on the fact that I'm not in perfect health yet. And I know it's closer, way closer than I can imagine. I believe in myself, I believe in my body, I believe in this work. And it's already happening. I mean, can you imagine? Two weeks ago I was in a wheelchair and now I'm just walking around everywhere. And the other thing I wanted to share was, you know how Dr. Joe says, don't expect anything especially don't expect anything after one or two meditations like it takes dedication and constant devotion to this uh, for a lot of people myself included it takes months of daily me daily meditations but it works it really does so if you're on that path of uncertainty and you know after a month or two physically there's not much happening keep doing it keep doing it and you know persevere because that healing or that goal or whatever um, change and transformation you're after it's happening and it's true and it's real and that was a big one for me it only depends on you you know we have this tendency myself included to look outwards for our healing and transformation like someone else will heal us a ceremony a plant a drug uh, a healer, a shaman, a guru, whatever, you know, a program, a life coach, whatever. We're often looking for something exterior to us, to heal us, heal us. But one of the profound teachings of this work is that it's all here and it really only depends on myself but the great news is we all have that power we can all do it is it easy no is it worth it a million percent so i really hope i really hope this story can somehow encourage you to persevere in your meditation practice, to persevere into gratitude, even on the days, and even more <laughs> on the days where it's hard and you feel like your life is hard and sucks and you feel miserable. Those days are the most important. Do your practice. Feel true, sincere gratitude for all your blessings and your life will change. Your body will change, your mind will change. It's amazing and beautiful, and we are all worthy of this miracle. I'm sending you much love and much courage. You are braver, stronger than you could ever know.